Did you know that you can cook a whole frozen rabbit in an instant pot? That's what we're gonna do today, and then I'm gonna turn it into some amazing shredded barbecue rabbit. Hi everybody, thanks so much for stopping by the homestead. My name is Sarah from Living Traditions Homestead, and I hope you know by now that we eat a lot of rabbit on our homestead and we raise a lot of meat rabbits. And so one of my challenges uh, is to teach you all how to cook with rabbit meat. Um, I have an entire cookbook of 25 of our family's favorite rabbit recipes. Uh, you can get that um, in our Etsy shop for $5 or on Amazon.com, an ebook for $5 as well. But today's video is a bonus video because this recipe is not in this book. Um, so today I uh, figured I would show you how easy it is to uh, cook rabbit and cook it in an instant pot and it turns out just amazing. Now, if you have not discovered our playlist yet of uh, the other rabbit cooking recipes that I've done, I will go ahead and put a link to that right up here. And if you are thinking about starting to raise rabbit meat for your family, which I highly recommend, um, I will go ahead and put a link to uh, our playlist of how to raise uh, meat rabbits right up here just so you can get started. Uh, so today, like I said, I am going to take a whole frozen rabbit. I'm gonna put it right in the Instant Pot and we're gonna cook it and it's gonna come out beautiful so that you can pull all of that meat off the bone um, into shredded rabbit meat and then I'm gonna turn that into uh, barbecue shredded rabbit meat for sandwiches for our lunches over the weekend. So you will probably not really believe me how easy it is to cook a frozen rabbit in an instant pot. Uh, so I am going to let you guys see for yourself as I do this and teach you how to do it also. Now I have here a two and a half pound rabbit that we have grown on our own homestead. Um, we uh, have packaged them in these, um, these shrink wrap bags. And so I'm just going to take it out of here, out of this bag, and I'm going to put it right into the Instant Pot uh, bowl. Now the Instant Pot, Instant Pot bowl, um, it comes with this grate on the bottom. So go ahead and put that in there so that your meat isn't resting right on the bottom. We're going to put our uh, rabbit, our whole frozen rabbit, right in there and I'm going to add two cups of water. I'm just gonna put this right into my Instant Pot. I'm going to put on the lid and lock it into place. I'm gonna make sure that uh, this valve here is, is completely pointing to the um, label that says sealing. Uh, that's gonna allow the, um, the pressure to escape until the pressure has built up enough and then it's going to uh, close it on its own. Okay, I'm going to plug it in. Now it's as easy as pressing the manual button and this comes up with 30 minutes right away on the timer and that's exactly how much time we need. So I'm not going to do anything else. It's going to start working its magic. And in the meantime, I'm going to get started preparing the sauce that we're going to use today. So over the summer, I made homemade barbecue sauce and I canned it and it turned out fantastic. But to make this a little bit more special, I'm going to doctor it up and I'm going to take you along. Now, if you're interested in learning how to make your own homemade barbecue sauce from the tomatoes that you grow in your garden, I actually made a pretty awesome video about that this summer and I'll put a link to that up here. So I'm going to start off um, dicing um, a medium onion and I'm going to saute that in a combination of coconut oil and bacon fat uh, to make it taste so great. So I'm going to get started on that onion. a small um, 
just a small saucepan and these are going to cook down. Now I'm going to add about one tablespoon of coconut oil and about one tablespoon of bacon fat. I do want to quickly mention to you that uh, I have found a really great deal on organic um, coconut oil on Amazon. Um, it is this uh, Nutiva Nurture Vitality um, organic coconut oil. I can get this coconut oil cheaper. This is a gallon. I can get it cheaper uh, organic than I can regular on Amazon. So if you're interested in that, uh, you can check out our Amazon shop um, and uh, order it through there. And we'll just get a teeny tiny little commission, which we appreciate. Uh, but if you're interested in this, just uh, go there to learn more, okay? Uh, so like I said, I'm going to put in just about a tablespoon of coconut oil in here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the bacon grease. Now, there are a few marriages, food marriages made in heaven. And in my opinion, one of them is onions fried in bacon grease. Now we don't have a whole lot of bacon grease around the house because we don't eat bacon very often. Uh, mainly because we haven't raised a pig in a while and I'm super excited about raising a couple uh, this summer. Okay, so I'm gonna get that going. That was about a tablespoon. I wish I had more, it's all gone. So I'm gonna heat that up. I'm gonna let all of that melt and keep stirring that around, stirring that around until the onions are soft. Okay, these are looking fantastic. So now I need to add a few more things. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna add is minced garlic. Now I'm gonna cheat today and I'm not gonna cut up uh, my own garlic, which I do have, but I, I do just really like having minced garlic just right in the refrigerator. So I'm going to add in about a tablespoon um, of minced garlic. I'm only gonna let that cook for a little bit because if you wait too long and cook the garlic for too long, it gets kind of bitter tasting. Well, I'm going to add about a half of a teaspoon of ground mustard powder and I'm gonna add about a half a tablespoon of brown sugar to sweeten it up. Probably about a quarter teaspoon of salt. Now I use pink Himalayan salt and um, I buy it in bulk on Amazon and I do have that in our Amazon store as well. If you wanna take a look at that, um, we just love it. We go through quite a bit of it um, and I really like that I can get it in bulk for a good price. I'm gonna add just a little bit of pepper just to sprinkle it in there. And I think that is pretty much everything before I add in the barbecue sauce. Now I'm gonna mix that around really well and now I'm gonna add my barbecue sauce. This is two half pint jars. So this is gonna be two cups of barbecue sauce that I'm gonna add into there. I definitely will not need this much barbecue sauce to make this barbecued shredded rabbit, but I'm really hoping that I'll have some yummy leftovers and maybe since it's gonna be a nice weekend, maybe Kevin will make barbecued chicken on the grill. So I'm gonna mix that in. It's gonna be so yummy. So perfect timing. Uh, the Instant Pot just a couple seconds ago shut off. It's all uh, done. Um, now I need to turn off the power and let the steam come down to normal on its own. And then we'll pull that rabbit out and get shredding. And I wanna show you how wonderful it's gonna come out of there. Okay, let's take a look at this rabbit. It's uh, ready for us to open and take a look. Now it's gonna be steamy and hot. All right, why don't you take a look in there? Okay, I'm, the, I'm gonna take a quick reading of the temperature uh, to make sure it's at least 160 degrees. Oh, it's definitely way over. Uh, so that is definitely reached temperature. And uh, so first of all, isn't it amazing that I put this in here completely rock solid and in about 30 minutes or maybe 45 uh, total, it is uh, completely cooked. Now I'm gonna take it out, it'll probably fall apart, uh, but I'm gonna take it out and put it on this plate so I can begin shredding it. And I'm going to shred it into a big um, 
measuring bowl so that I can tell you how much meat we get off of one two and a half pound rabbit. There, that's everything. Now the broth in there you can save too. You can just put that right in the refrigerator um, and use that in a soup or something like that. I'm just gonna set that aside. And now I'm just gonna start shredding this meat into the bowl. Um, and I wanna show you how much meat you can get off of one rabbit. So look at all of the meat that we pulled off of this two and a half pound rabbit. It's about three and a half to four cups of shredded meat. And I hope that you are surprised about how much meat you can get off of one rabbit. I also want to show you really how little waste there is. Uh, these are all the bones that are left. This is it. This is all that's left from us pulling off the meat from this rabbit. So now we get to combine it all together and make some amazing shredded barbecue rabbit for our lunch tomorrow. Now my plan for this is to serve it with homemade hamburger buns. And uh, I'm going to make those fresh tomorrow. I'm hoping to teach Samantha how to make them. Uh, but if you have not uh, made homemade hamburger buns, uh, you should really try my recipe. I, ha I made a video of that and they're fantastic. I've had so many compliments on them. Um, and if you'd like to see that video, you can take a look at that right up there. I'll leave a link. So this is looking pretty fantastic. And it looks like I'm gonna have some leftover barbecue sauce, maybe for some grilled chicken uh, this weekend. Don't forget to check out our cookbook on Amazon and Etsy. And if you are striving to live a more traditional life in this crazy modern world, make sure that you press the subscribe button below. We're all trying to figure that out together. Until next time, you guys, thanks so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless.